When we started, our aspirations for the school were literally just to get the bones of a building up and to have some girls in some rooms and really try to prove the idea that if you have girls in front of really strong teachers and being pushed to think about how they can change the world, you'll be able to produce leaders. We wanted to create an environment that espoused all of our values, excellence, um, integrity, but more than anything had this feeling of a safe space and a sanctuary to be able to develop who you are as a person. I think what's interesting is that in the beginning, I felt like I had to have a lot of control over what the school, what the campus would look like. I feel like I've let that all go. And all of it is a surprise because when you're someone who has an idea and a vision for a project, but you're not someone who's ever had an experience building anything, I think there's a huge amount of learning from what you think is the right thing to develop and then what ends up being the output. So for me, what's been so surprising is me learning myself to be able to give up a lot of the control because what we saw is that when people work together, you just got outcomes that were so much better. When I started Case Design, uh, Avsara was our only project and so obviously it was a very small group of, of architects working on the project, but very quickly that, that circle grew. Uh, we had a uh, climate control engineer from New York. We brought in Milena to work with us on the color. When we got into the building process and, and the landscape, Hemali and the local farmers became really critical for us. And so for me, one of the exciting things about working in that way is to have the advantage of all of the experience, knowledge, and skill that these people have, but also, and more importantly, I think their energy and enthusiasm. It makes the process more fun. It also extends it way beyond the realm of what we could imagine ourselves. And so through that collective, it just brings a lot of enrichment to the project. When someone new comes to the campus, I think the relationship is already so strong through the architect, the architect's team, um, and on our side with our relationship um, through the whole life of building the school that you have, an, you have trust at a level that you wouldn't normally have and I think that breaks a tremendous amount of barriers and you're, we're just able to get so much more done than you typically would in a, in a project. It's 50%, you know, 50% green and here it's only 30% green, or the other one was 30% green. So I collaborate with architects and integrate the artistic dimension in the building, in the functional objects, functional dimensions. So it's not like, you know, an art piece that you put into a building after the building is done, but we try to integrate the artistic level. I try to add some meaning to the space. This meaning derives from researchers about the building, the architecture, the, the site, um, the history, the geography, you know, like where is it, what is the type of landscape, what is the type of building, is it an ex existing building, which history, or is it like a new building? Girls at a certain age come to this school, that's very important. The landscape here, the situation in the mountains, that's also very important. The meaning is already there. You just have to pick it up and make it the part of the, um, the actual space, you know? A huge part of the reason I enjoy practicing in India is the ability that we have here to make things, to produce things by hand, by machine, here in our workshop, on a site, to really interact and collaborate with the people that are building the spaces, the objects, the elements that we're working with them to design. For me, as I was growing up, I would build things in my grandfather's workshops in the summer. 
I would work with my mom to make projects at home. And so when I started to form case design, one of the things that was really important was to have the ability to make samples, to make mock-ups, to build models. That act of making was really critical to the way I wanted to practice. हर जगह पे ये स्टोरी नहीं होता है कि एक एक डिटेल आप मौका बनाओ या उसका ड्राइंग बनाओ वो सब नहीं लगाते हैं वो खाली ऊपर ऊपर से दो ड्राइंग बनाया ये किया बस करो लेकिन ये सब स्टोरी है हम उधर सब जाके डिसीजन करके सब देखते हैं तो वो सब अलग है और ये टाइप का काम हर जगह पे नहीं होता है सैम सर ने खूब मेहनत किया है और खूब उसमें दिल लगा के किया है कि हाँ कैसा क्या होना चाहिए हर चीज़ के ऊपर जो फाउंडेशन है किधर ग्रिल होना चाहिए किधर का हवा कैसे आना चाहिए किधर बैठने के लिए सब जगह होना चाहिए फ्लोरिंग कैसा होना चाहिए स्टेर कैसा होना चाहिए और दरवाजे कैसे होने चाहिए कि बजट भी ज़्यादा नहीं हुए तो वो तरीके से सब किया बहुत अच्छा लगा हमको वो सब देख के encourage us to question do we really need mechanical system to create this experiential quality inside the building and that's where we decided that we will use the architecture design itself the building's massing material and first principles of building physics to create comfortable indoor and actually also outdoor uh, environments without using any mechanical system and therefore not using almost any energy aa synthetic material aata hai plastic aati hai panel aate hain wo laga diya darwaza latka diya bathroom ready ho gaye पर ये जो बनाए हैं ये बच्चों के लिए आज मतलब इनके जो जो बच्चियां पढ़ रहे हैं उनके पोते तक मतलब पढ़ सकते हैं इतना वो काम करेगा राजस्थान गए राजस्थान में राजस्थान में भी जो क्रेजी जो टुकड़े होते हैं वो वहाँ अलग अलग कलर के जो हमने सोचे कि टुकड़े हैं पर फिर भी उसमें थोड़ी क्वालिटी कैसे बने तो मैंने वहाँ उदयपुर नाथद्वारा के पास वहाँ गया हूँ वहाँ अलग अलग शो पे अलग अलग फैक्ट्रियों पे गया तो वहाँ जो वेस्टेज है उसको एक जगह एक वेस्टेज वाइट मार्बल का एक पूरा लोट है तो वो एक साइड में है वो उदयपुर से अपोजिट साइड में अहमदाबाद साइड में केसरिया करके गांव है उधर ग्रीन निकलता है पिंक मार्बल जो वहाँ से थोड़ा और चित्तौड़गढ़ साइड है उसमें येलो स्टोन भी यूज़ किया वो जैसलमेर से है हम लोग ऐसा सोच के कि ये हमारा हमारा घर हमारा खुद का स्कूल है वो हिसाब से हम आगे इसको आगे बढ़ा रहे हैं आई जस्ट अंडरस्टूड दैट सिंस देर आर दीज ब्यूटिफुल फ्लोर्स एंड देर आर दीज लॉन्ग ब्रिक्स विद विद सीमेंट वॉश दैट्स ऑल्सो वेरी ब्यूटिफुल आई फाइंड इट हैज इट ओन टेक्सचर यू नो and there are the wooden doors which have been cleaned and reused so there are all these materials which are so beautiful and already taken care of these surfaces the floors the walls the doors and then there is the concrete which i love i love concrete i love that you can actually see the casting and the joints and yeah. all that that's wonderful but the thing was just that you know with all these concrete Wall, so the walls had cement and the concrete ceilings it was kind of dark and i felt that nobody had been taking care of of the ceilings everything else had been taken care of but not the ceilings first when i got to know that we are not actually going to color the school uh, only we are going to color the ceilings i was a little upset but then when i uh, um, really knew about the idea behind it about how it's it's eco friendly and we shouldn't actually color it with oil paints and all i really started loving it even though it's simple it's really beautiful and unique i cried um when we were sitting and she was telling me how her experience of afsara understanding what we were doing the program the girls fed into how she was thinking about color i think it threw me for a loop because i thought about color so simply and it just was such an insight 
um, into how you could think about it and how it affects the experience of a place um, on so many different levels. बच्चों को क्या है कि कलर से बहुत ये रहता है तो वो भी एक जो अलग अलग कलर आप हम लोग ने यूज किए हैं तो उनको लगता है कि मैं ये क्लास से वो क्लास में गई हूँ कि उनको ऐसा लगता है कि मैं मेरी ये मेरी क्लास है पर जब भी दूसरी जाती है कि ये मेरी क्लास नहीं ये मेरे फ्रेंड की क्लास है In these buildings, you have the landscape all over. When you're in the buildings, the landscape will be a part of the site, you know. So therefore, the colors inside the building will always, you know, appear together with the landscape. So it should always work with the surroundings. I grew up in a very different environment than this. I didn't grow up in a city. Um, I always had a lot of green space around me. And so I feel like our attempt with this campus and spending so much time and effort making it green will leave the same sort of impact on our girls. I think it just really makes the process of introspection and thinking so magical. I want the sense of it to linger with our girls because they don't get it at all in the rest of their lives. Initially, when we came with the site, we had no idea how this thing's going to work. But then we thought that there were many farmlands around it and they use a very smart way of using water and plantation and they know actually about this whole region. I met two good farmers who were ready to help us. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's a jungle. आणि थोडं दगडी काय पिकत वगैरे काहीच नव्हतं ही ज्यावेळेस कंपनी आली म्हणजे अवसरात शाळा आली स्कूल त्यावेळेस तर भारीच वाटलं कारण की काहीतरी इकडं डेव्हलप होणार आहे आणि सगळ्याच लवळ्यात चांगली शाळा आहे आणि इथला एरिया तरी चांगलाच आहे शांत वगैरे शाळेसाठी वगैरे सगळ्यासाठी Partway through the construction of the campus, we had the opportunity to share the work we'd been doing at the 2018 Venice Biennale. Uh, it was an incredible opportunity for us, and what we wanted to try and do was to create something that would go beyond the realm of just the period and the, the space of the exhibition itself. And so all the elements that we tried to create for the exhibition were all things that we wanted to bring back to the school. Not just physical artifacts like lights and furniture and things like that, but also to explore ideas. And so part of that was developing a bamboo gym, working with new collaborators, developing a peace pavilion. And so all of those pieces, all of those different elements will go back and become a part of the campus when the exhibitions are, are finished. When we knew that the exhibition would be shown in Venice, we wanted to think about a way that we could bring the artisanry and craft of that place back to the school to help build some of the institutional memory for Avsara. And we settled very quickly on the idea of using the traditional glass blowing technique in Murano, one of the islands of Venice, and reached out to a number of different workshops and, and craftsmen there. And very generously, Lua Murano and Fabio Fornassier agreed to work with us. And so what we worked out was a process of melting scrap material, industrial waste, produced from, from their workshop, small pieces of, of colored glass that could be assembled into very simple discs and made into these elements that we could use as chandeliers in the school. We also wanted to create a plan of the campus that would explain it in a different way. We had the drawings, we had the landscape, we had the buildings, but we really wanted to present it at a particular scale. We wanted it to be something made by hand, something made with craft and thoughtfulness. And so we found in Ahmedabad a woman named Nehal Desai, who works with a lot of local uh, artisans and craftspeople there, especially in textiles. And we created this campus plan using embroidery. And for us, the idea of this handmade, but 
very precisely done stitching would really bring not just the built environment to life, but also be an appropriate expression of the landscape, which was really important. In the corner of this building, okay. where no one can see anyone, mm. but only the gardeners. But we, we three of us sit there and chit chat all the time. So no one knows that we go there. And <laughs> so we like all have a isolated a, place. Yeah, we have like whenever we have any of our birthdays or anything, that is like the place where we go during the breaks, hide and you know celebrate a little and party. <laughs> We knew that the school had to have classrooms, library, offices, things like that, all of the typical program that you would need for a school. But I always believed that the sort of life of the school, the heart, the energy would come from these spaces that are in between spaces. Staircases, courtyards, verandas, places where girls would become friends, have social interactions, tell secrets, get extra learning support from teachers. Uh, these sort of smaller, more intimate moments, and we really looked for opportunities in between the rest of the program to fit those little experiences in. We very carefully designed this exterior bamboo shading, and we have kind of this setback for the dormitory rooms to create these semi-outdoor verandas to avoid exposure to direct sun without completely eliminating the solar radiation. We are actually bringing in only the amount of solar radiation that is necessary for creating good daylight and visual comfort inside the space without bringing in any solar heat. जो पुराने में जो लोग बोलते थे कि जब दिन में चांद नहीं रहता है क्या अमावस होता है वो टाइम में काटने का सबको ये आइडिया नहीं लेकिन मेरा पूरा आइडिया है मैं भी पुराना थोड़ा पुराना भी आदमी है लेकिन चांद नहीं होना मांगता है दिन में वो टाइम में काटना मांगता है ऐसा क्यों बोलेगा तो उसमें जो कीड़ा रहता है लगता है सब कीड़ा जाके उसमें भुस्सा निकलता है ऐसा वाइट वाइट भुस्सा अपने आटा के माफिक समझो वो छोटा कीड़ा रहता है वो लगने के बाद वो बम्बू खत्म होता है वो होल में पानी जाता है और वो बम्बू एक साल में पूरा खत्म होता है इसलिए अंधेरी रात अंधेरा जब रहेगा दिन में चांद नहीं वो टाइम काटने का काम करने वाला जो आदमी है उसको भी एक बार हाथ से जाता है तो नेक्स्ट टाइम वो काम करता है तो उसका क्वालिटी भी वो क्या होता है एक बार आदमी काम करता है तो जो भी उसमें अगर गलती हो जाता है तो आदमी जो कारागिर आदमी है वो दिमाग में पकड़ के रखता है कि अभी ये मेरे से गलती हो गया तो नेक्स्ट टाइम वो गलती होता नहीं है तो मतलब उसमें सुधार भी होता है मौकअप करते हैं उसके अंदर और सबको अच्छा है A big part of the reason we enjoy practicing here in India is the artisans and craftsmen that we get to work with and while we do a lot of that through drawing and conversation, I think a lot of it, a lot of the joy, a lot of the pleasure also comes through the making of mock-ups. It's a great way for us to bridge language issues but also to really explore ideas and, and test out what it is that we're thinking about. And so. We produce these artifacts, we have conversations about them, we share them with our team, we share them with the clients, and it's a really good way for the people that are involved in whatever agency they may have, but for them to really engage with the process and the, the people that we work with really support that. For the we got a drawing for the so we made a mock-up तो मौकब के ऊपर बैठ के भी देखे कि हाँ ये आइट बरोबर है ये डीप बरोबर है और प्लाईवुड स्टूल जो बनाए उसका भी ड्राइंग बनाया तो उसमें हमने सैंपल भी बनाए कि उसके ऊपर बैठ के देखें और बच्चे लोग उसके ऊपर बैठ के देखें 
कि कौन सा हाइट बेटर रहेगा तो वो सब मॉकअप तैयार करके फिर देख लिया कितना एक इंच ऊपर आधा इंच नीचे ऐसे वो सब हमने तैयार करके फिर फाइनलाइज किया और उसके बाद हमने इधर अलीबाग मेरा वर्कशॉप है उसमें हमने ये सब चालू किया I've always been inspired by Mira's work and and the work of her father George Nakashima and when I had the opportunity to visit their studio and and workshop and share some of the things that we were doing at Avsara I think that it inspired them as well. I went there with the hope that we could find a way to collaborate on a piece of furniture or some kind of element for the school and just through conversation and dialogue they were so kind and so generous they volunteered to create one of their peace altars that they produced through the Nakashima Foundation later when they were able to come to the school i know that they were really touched by by the environment by the young women in particular mira spoke about her experiences as a woman as a designer as a practitioner and I know that that had a, a deep impact on the girls as well. The light and the energy that they brought into the space was just incredible and, and really inspiring for me as well. My father did believe that each tree had a soul, <laughs> and that each plank of wood had a specific purpose. When you work with solid wood, you never know. what it wants to say until you start working with it and then you have to um to treat it as another living being and go with the flow I and mean, sometimes it'll want to be something different than what you thought it was going to be or it's going to say something different than what you thought it was going to say and and that's part of the dialogue we have with the material we wanted mira to model excellence which is one of our values we really wanted her to come and spend time with our students we wanted our students to understand what it meant um to really think of your work as a craft there and he taught them how to make furniture he thought that they should when dad conceived of his peace altar idea he dreamed that there would be one peace altar on each continent but then my committee said well we can have smaller points of light linking different parts of the world together so this this network of of peace communication would get bigger and bigger i think it's important to maintain a structure for the spiritual development of the students in this community when mira and jonathan had the idea for the the peace table or the peace altar that they were going to produce for the girls of Absara they wanted it to be housed in a in a space of of tranquility a space of meditation and so sitting at their table uh in their studio in Pennsylvania we came up with this idea of a peace pavilion and it kind of floated in the atmosphere for a while and and when we had the opportunity after Venice to take the exhibition on to Switzerland and then eventually into Belgium the Flemish Institute of Architecture introduced us to BC Architects and we sort of kicked around this idea of creating a workshop in rammed earth and immediately something clicked for me where i thought that that might be a way for us to bring a small piece of belgium back to india to use the again the resources of that workshop to create something for the campus and the idea of having the students design and produce these very simple rammed earth elements that could be stacked and create the kind of shell of a space for the peace pavilion I think it's nice again because if you have people from different backgrounds discussing things from completely different perspectives and I think again that we come to kind of a holistic view of architecture in which you ask the participants most architects but also people from different backgrounds to work with this material um and make them understand that architecture or design is not only kind of shaping an object but also understanding how to finish it where it's sourced from so all these kind of of elements i think uh they add 
to the participants a kind of baggage you bring with you during a, during a lifetime. Yeah, I think also a workshop creates a kind of momentum. You know, you bring people together, they connect with each other, they, they get to know each other. And it's really about also creating a unique situation for this stuff to happen. I think uh, if everyone was trying to design this all alone in his room, it would not have played out how it plays out now in this week. So the creation of momentum is super important and, and that's why it also helps to have an outlook when you do a workshop of something that is real. In this case, the objects are really going to be exhibited and become a pavilion that serves a school. पहले जब भी एजुकेट करने से पहले मैं सोच लेता हूँ कि इसको क्या तरीके से कर सकते हैं और मैं ऐसा नहीं है कि मैं खुद मैं आपने आपसे करता हूँ मैं मेरे जो मेरे कारीगर हैं उनके पूरे आइडिया लेता हूँ एक क्रेजी लगाने वाला है क्रेजी लगाने में ऐसा नहीं है कि क्रेजी आया और रख दिया और हो गया नहीं है उसमें उसमें उसका डायरेक्शन उसके टुकड़े उसकी ये उसकी क्वालिटी ये सब देखना रहता है कि गैप ज़्यादा तो नहीं जा रहा है आप रख रहे हैं और वो क्या होता है कि जब आप कारीगरों को उनको एक्सपर्ट कर देते हैं ना तो आँख बंद करके भी रखेंगे ना तो अच्छा ही रखेंगे हाथ उसके हिसाब से चलता है फिक्सिंग करने में क्या है कारीगर को ये सोचा कि आपको दिमाग में सोचो मत कि मैंने मेरे को पांच फीस वो लाने हैं और वो पांच इधर डालने हैं वो पांच इधर डालने हैं नहीं सोचो वो सब वैसा मत सोचना आपके जो हाथ में आंख बंद के जो हाथ में आवे वो पहराते जाओ मतलब रखते जाओ गैप है ये है एक सिमरल देखना चाहिए आपका इतना पैटर्न बन रहा है ऐसा बन रहा है कैसा जैसा बन रहा है आप आड़ा लगा रहे हो टेढ़ा लगा रहे हो जैसा आप बढ़ते जाओ बढ़ते जाओ आप लो जैसे ही वो उन्होंने थोड़ा लगाया तो उनको खुद को वो हुआ कि ये तो मैं क्या कर रहा हूँ ये तो कैसा दिख रहा है उनको खुद को जो मतलब वो हिसाब से फिर उनको मेरे को बताने की जरूरत नहीं पड़ी कि वो इतने उसके अंदर आगे बढ़ गए all the thought that has gone into the craftsmanship of this campus, all the materials that we've reused, and really think in the future about how to take whatever resources you have and stretch them to the max. And I think when I see our students, that has really resonated with them and made them think, I can go home and I can actually look at reusing things. At the beginning, I thought about the door, तो उसके अलावा भी दरवाजे एक बढ़िया ऑप्शन था कि पुराने दरवाजे और ये दरवाजे आज के दिन में दरवाजे तो बना नहीं थे पर एक ये होती है कि आप नए नई चीज़ पिलाई है या ये है वो उनकी एक उम्र है कि सम टाइम बाद में वो खराब जाएंगे पर ये जो दरवाजे जो हमने जो कर रहे हैं ये ऑलरेडी 50 साल दो साल यूज हो चुके हैं और आगे भी पत, हम गारंटी के साथ में बोल सकता हूँ कि पचास साठ साल और यूज कर सकते हैं one of the things we realized very early on in the process was that this would be the first time living away from home for most of these young women. And so it was really important for us to introduce familiar elements into the project. The use of reclaimed doors and windows allowed us to utilize wood in a way we otherwise wouldn't have been able to afford. The reclaimed stone, the mosaic floors are something that a lot of these girls would have had in their family homes going back for generations. and. The element for me that really kind of tied everything together was was the char pie. Char pie इले आ आपड़ा गामड़ा नी बेड दे उसे। पची ये बता घरे बैठा हुआ है के एक तो सू के हमारे त्यां जी उम्र वाला हुआ है ये लोगों ने जोड़े के खेती वाड़ी हुआ है हमारे खेती वाड़ी चार महीना नहीं हुआ है आठ महीना जी उम्र वाला ने कहीं काम पर जा ही नहीं सकता न कर ही नहीं सके तो ये लोगों ने शो किया बदू आवे आल धागा ले लें काप टाइम पास था ही जाए न चार पाइप बनाओ मटे धागो भी तैयार था ही जाए 
The other thing we liked about the Charpai was that it was incredibly versatile. It's a lightweight piece of furniture that can be used in the verandas, it can be used outdoors. The girls could pick it up themselves and take it around and use it, put it under a tree in the shade. It's great for one person to lie down. We've seen four or five girls using them, just kind of piled on top of each other. And so in that sense, we felt that it was a really relevant and appropriate piece of furniture. The other thing that was incredibly appealing was the metaphor of the charpai, the idea that this very, very simple wooden frame that's literally held together by threads made by these elderly craftsmen from recycled cotton saris. It holds this frame and, and contains this piece of furniture. And the idea for that was, was very powerful for me. It feels very earthy here, like, it feels like home. Yeah. Like nothing is very artificial and superficial, but everything is natural and reused and recycled. Sometimes the color or the art does that. It connects. In India, they have this wonderful tradition with colored with pigments, color pigments, which is uh, a long, very old tradition. And you see it in, in the old villages. And it also has a very beautiful texture. Instead of using the prefabricated industrial paint, which doesn't have the same color quality at all, as the pigments they have. The girls, they come from different towns and villages and, and they, will, they will remember their different color, they will have color memories with them from home, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and they will recognize some of these colors here yeah. in these buildings because yeah. those are the colors that we use. Mm. The colors from the villages and from old houses all over India. When you come into this school, it looks different to any other school that you would see because there is so much thoughtfulness put into every part of the experience of being a student and what it means to be an adolescent girl growing into being a young woman in India. We were in the classrooms and the girls were stopped, you know, and then they could talk to each other and finding out that they understood the subject well, that everybody in the classroom was in the same level, and how they supported each other in understanding. Uh, it was great for us to see that, I mean, this is going to be very confident young women that are going to make a big contribution uh, to their society and their community. And we are, uh, it's great for us to be part of that work and to kind of showing them their tradition to, to maybe create something where we can say look there are medicinal plants that have been used for generations to say okay this and this when you see in the landscape your mothers and grandmothers has used has used them for dyeing colors or for ayurvedic medicines and to really install that that seed as i said earlier on of care in them I think one of the things we really tried to focus on was this careful use of resources, everything from money, but also energy, effort, time, all the way down to stone and timber and concrete. And so it became sort of an exercise in trying to get the maximum results out of very minimal input. And one of the most important or critical resources that we realized we had for the sustainability of the school was the use of water. We took a lot of inspiration from the local farmers and the way that, that they utilized it and the way that they processed it and distributed it across their land. And so for us it became a really important element to understand as a sort of life source for the campus. The surrounding villages mainly use wells as a primary source of water. So the whole idea which initiated when I first visited site that we really have to manage water. Because until, until we don't manage water, there is no landscape. So then we came up with water channels, create a network of water which can spread all over the site and we can use it extensively as part of landscape. This is a very traditional method, like the farmers use this method of planting various fields. So since it is a sloping land, we had this elevated water 
channel which can run throughout the site and in between we can have connection which can water all the plantation surrounding it. नाला बनाने का काम तो हम लोग मतलब बहुत पहले से ही जानते थे कि ऐसा क्योंकि हमारे इधर तो बहुत मतलब हमारे पिताजी और हमारे पिताजी मतलब कड़िया है तो वो सीमेंट में बनाए थे लेकिन उनके पिताजी मेरे दादाजी वो तो कड़िया नहीं थे तो वो सीमेंट में नहीं मिट्टी का बनाते थे वो पानी डालने का जो हमने टंकी बनाया है वो टंकी का लेवल निकाला और वो लेवल के हिसाब से ऑटोमेटिक उधर टंकी भरने के बाद उधर पानी और फ्लो होके नाला में आना मांगता है ये हिसाब से हम लोगों ने वो नाला बनाया ये नाला ही समझो इधर ये झाड़ है उसको पानी जाने के लिए रास्ता मांगता है वो हिसाब से हमने उधर रास्ता एक ईट का खाचा रखा है वो ईट निकालेगा तो इधर रखेगा तो पानी जो आता है तो नाले में पूरा ऐसा जाता है We were planting plants together and it was a lot of fun. We tried to do it over there where we have our garden. So we planted a few trees over there and it's very good to see like everywhere we are walking. We don't only have buildings but there's also, there are also plants and greenery around. And there are some places where um, there, are, there are so many different flowers that all the fragrance gets mixed and then there's <laughs> one fragrance and it's really beautiful. And we really enjoy walking when, whenever we are going, moving from one class to another. There's always trees around and all, so it's really nice. All problems in this world can be solved in a garden. When we came and we saw how the school is built, you know, the ways of consideration of creating places for these young students to be able to learn well and to introduce new teaching techniques, not to go down the old routes, to have buildings that are self-cooling, uh, freshly prepared food, uh, uh, lots of attention to the students, to really the necessary and important things in life, and like care uh, for each other and for the environment. There was one point yesterday when we started talking about people care, and we started talking about empathy, and you could already see that their eyes, they, they, they sort of understand what empathy means, you know, because especially for me, permaculture is not just something to do with agriculture, but it's how you design your life, how you make decisions. And I always tell people that one of the traits that we should learn is to empathize with, with, the, with other people because I think it makes you live with one another in peace and it also makes you integrate rather than segregate the other people or other culture or other beliefs and I think the girls actually get that. I think for them it's like a way of life already. <laughs> We're talking about craftsmanship and uh, I think from there on uh, there's this Asian saying that if you know everything of one thing you know everything of everything. Meaning, if you try to understand, uh, as craftsmen do, to kind of focus and try to get a technique completely uh, in your hands and under control and try to understand where, what comes from, the, the wood that you're working is a type of wood growing somewhere and this uh, tree is, has its roots and it has water. So, when you try to understand everything of this one specific wood element, you, go, you can go so far and, and actually everything in life is based on this kind of same principle, everything is interconnected. If you know everything of one thing, you basically know everything. I think I'm just so amazed at the level of depth and thoughtfulness and I get to learn from all of these amazing experts and each one of them has just been incredibly thoughtful. I've been able to learn a lot. So selfishly, um, this project has, has really opened my eyes to what it means for thinking about craft. We hope that what we've created here uh, really serves to other designers, architects, even people starting a school, that the idea of a school that has all of these elements doesn't mean that it has to be expensive, it doesn't mean that it has to be exclusive. It really comes out of 
the idea of collaboration and a sort of careful understanding of how resources get used. And through that kind of thoughtful engagement, we hope that it serves as a prototype for other projects, not just in India, but elsewhere in the world, but also that the school, the local school down the road, does see it as a way to make these things accessible. Everything from the solar chimneys to the mosaic floors, these are not things that come with a price tag. They come with effort, they come with thoughtfulness, but they are, uh, they are accessible and they can be things that can become part of the process. I think what they see is a group of very diverse people coming from all around the world who have all been anchored by the idea of this girls' school in India. And I think what I want them to take away is that with one idea, that you can create something that grows into a community of people bound by that vision to really create something that you could never even imagine.